No doubt, the S-Log3 S Gamma 3 Cine is the best picture profile on the Sony A7S III. I'll show you my easy workflow with S-Log3 during shooting, how to expose S-Log3, how to color grade it, prove you that the S-Log3 is the best picture profile on the Sony A7S III overall, and even for low light, that the S-Log3 is the best profile in terms of color accuracy, and how to tweak it a little bit to avoid the green tint of the Sony S-Log3 picture profile. Let's go! What's good guys, my name is Oleg Nikitin and you're watching No Limits On. Let's start off with the settings. You go to your picture profiles, choose any PP number, I chose PP9, but these are the containers and you can choose any. And here you choose S-Log3, S-Gamma3 Cine and go down to color phase and set it to plus 2 to add a little bit of magenta to colors and solve the green tint issue. Shout out to Gerald and Dan who found this setting to be the most accurate in terms of color and I highly recommend checking his videos about Sony colors. You'll find a lot of important and interesting info. Now let's move on to exposing S-Log3. This profile loves light. That is why you want to expose it as high as possible without clipping the highlights. For this I use zebras at 95 IRE because at 100 IRE the camera won't show you the zebras for some reason. The screen recording from the Atomos Ninja 5 also doesn't show you the zebras that is why I shot my camera screen so you can see it properly. So I raise the exposure till I see the zebras appear on my screen and lower the exposure for a third of a stop to protect the highlights from clipping. If my ISO is higher than 3200 to achieve such exposure, I switch to the second native ISO of the Sony A7S III, 12800 and I use the aperture to dial in the correct exposure. Also some people use the gamma display assist function, but it will appear highly overexposed while still maintaining a lot of information in the highlights and will cheat on you and your eyes, that is why I don't use it at all. Even at night the bright picture with lower ISO values is better than the darker picture with lower ISO. You can clearly see that in this video comparison. You can watch the whole video by using the YouTube card or the link in the description. Also, as you can see, the S-Log3 is a better codec for low light than the PP of neutral and I shoot only in S-Log3 with exposing at plus 2 stops all the time. Also, you need to set the white balance correctly, that is why I prefer to use custom white balance tool when I can. You can tweak the picture to fix the white balance in post and get good results because of the 10-bit codec, but setting a correct white balance is always important and saves you time in post. If you use an external monitor or recording with LUTs like Adamus Ninja 5, you can upload a LUT made by Alistair Chapman for S-Log3 at minus 2 EV. The link to his website is in the description and those LUTs are free, but you can toss a coin to Alistair to show the respect. So at minus 2 EV, with the LUT applied, the picture on the monitor will appear exposed correctly and looking great while maintaining plus 2 EV of overexposure. I use this method and expose as if I was using the PP off neutral profile, judging the exposure by my eyes and false color too. The thing is to always lower the exposure in pose so you can push down the noise, thus getting a much cleaner image even when using very high ISO values. Now let's move on to the post-production. The first thing I do is applying the Alistair Chapman minus 2 EV S-Log3 LUT. If I see that the picture is too dark after using it, I can set minus 1.5 EV LUT or minus 1 EV LUT. Then I tweak the highlights and the mid-tones a little bit and adjust the color if I want to. If I have a person in the frame, I use the draw mask tool to isolate the skin and then I use the vectorscope to tweak it so the skin color is laying at the line of the vectorscope for proper skin tones. And after, I can tweak the image a little bit till I'm satisfied with the result. Also, the Sony A7S III tends to have a very saturated and vibrant red color. That is why from time to time I select the red color and lower the saturation of it a little bit, so it's not that vibrant. And this is it, guys! If you set the correct exposure and white balance during the shoot, working with S-Log3 in post is pretty simple. You get the maximum dynamic range of the camera using the S-Log3, get very accurate color reproduction and a lot of room in post for grading the image. But I do not recommend using the S-Log3 on 8-bit cameras. I prefer to stick to the S-Log2 to avoid bending or color issues on such cameras. Here is a question of the episode. Which Sony picture profile do you use and why? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Feel free to ask me some questions in the comments 
And if you like the content on my channel, please hit the like and subscribe buttons and the notifications bell to watch more of my videos. This was Oleg Nikitin and No Limits On. Take care, guys. Bye.